I didn't know we were going to do that at the moment we did. I'd already like, so right before we went downstairs, I went to the washroom. And then as soon as we get there, they're like, here's your cup. You got to fill this up. I was like, what? <laughs> I'm like, okay. And then you go to the washroom and some guy's staring at your junk the whole time. I'm like, okay, this is going to, I even, I looked at him like, this is probably going to take me a while because this is uncomfortable as all hell. So, but I got it done. And then, yeah, test hydration levels, fine, throw it out, whatever. But did they do did they do te- much testing outside of hydration levels? Like, I don't feel like I had any drug testing done to myself. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, let's jump right into it, Dustin. Um, you're returning Perfect. on February 11th in Singapore. One Championship, Bad Blood. I love. What are your thoughts on the titles at One Championship? puts out you know what i mean bad blood the <laughs> empire strikes back you know all of that good stuff um yeah i mean it, i kind of like it at least uh you can definitely tell them apart <laughs> w- which event is what you know like what does the ufc do they're usually just like uh, uh 270 271 two. i mean like that's cool too i guess at least you know which one you're keeping track of i guess with the names um if you never number it you never know if it's a if it's an old one or not because you you know is that is that old is that new like uh, what event is this one coming up? Yeah, there's uh, there's advantages and disadvantages to it, right? Like you said, for sure. <laughs> you know, I think the UFC a long time ago they did put like yeah, yeah titles to their shows, but it didn't really make a difference because they they already said it was UFC 65 Bad Blood. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So it's like whatever, you know what I mean? So now now more or less they'll just uh, it's. It'll be like UFC, whatever number, and then the two people's names. So exactly. it'll be like, you know, Ningano versus Gain or yeah. whatever. <laughs> my my thing is with one championship, and, and I like that they do, um, you know, titles for each event. It's fine with me. You know what I mean? It's different from, you know, everybody else. It's just when are they going to run out of titles? Yeah. You know, like they they come up with so many unique titles. I know. It just boggles my mind. Is it Tatri who's <laughs> doing it all? Yeah. <laughs> and like um who cleans up all that confetti that's another question right like <laughs> man that must be a hell of a job right uh, there like you got to go out I there do, and hand i do i do like the confetti and especially it definitely glorifies the moment of winning a belt mm-hmm. and like uh you get some pretty cool pictures yeah with uh the confetti coming down so yeah, it's just like your your UFC should look into some confetti. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like they're sprinkling gold on you, you know. Like... Yeah, for sure. I, I, I kind of like it. It's yeah. cool, but it definitely yeah, yeah. would be a lot to clean up. Yeah. Well, you're a custodian, so you know, like that's. It. I know, right? <laughs> like, you're always looking for the cleanup. You know, like who's doing this? Who's doing that? Exactly. You know I mean? Um, let's talk about the matchup, man. Uh, Hugo Cunha. I hope I'm saying this. Undefeated Brazilian making his promotional debut. Generally, when you get a name, you probably go in there and, and look him up and see his record. What were your thoughts? Um, yeah, so I did a little research. Um, there's not a lot on him. Like, there's not a lot on me either. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Stan, he looks like he's pretty well-rounded. Um, likes to do a lot, a little bit more traditional Muay Thai striking. And I'm cool with that. I fought a guy with 17 pro uh, Thai fights, so... You know, back when I fought for Machado for the BFL title, I kind of figure they're both they're both the exact same size and height. The only difference was Machado was a uh, southpaw, and I didn't even know that going into the fight until we touched gloves. But you know, this guy's going to be orthodox, so I should be okay with that. You know, for yourself in preparation, is it better for you to have less information about your opponent than more? For me. Kind of. I don't want to get, um, I don't know, overwhelmed, I guess, with how much stuff he has and like what he's done and what he brings to the table. For me, I just like to keep it simple. I get my coaches. I, w- I watch a bit, but mostly I get my coaches to watch and they'll say, you know, he likes to do this. He likes to throw the overhand. He likes to do whatever. And then we'll work on that in the gym. So... <laughs> Yeah, simple. You know, sometimes simple is is the best way to do it, right? Not mm-hmm. make it too complicated. Then your mind sure. starts to flow in different directions. Yeah, 
All right, so let's uh, jump into the the last fight, man. Your your one debut. You went to war. You know, I don't think a yeah. lot of people expected a war like that. To be honest with you, what was no. your expectations heading into the fight? Well, I knew he was a grappler, so it's always a bit. I don't know. I always get a bit hesitant when I fight grappler, especially because I like clinching and stuff like that. Um, so I knew as soon as he grabbed me, he was going to try and take me down, which he did. And with the rules being different in one, I kept, I don't know, I was kind of like overthinking in my head. I didn't want to like roll to my knees, start taking knees to the head. So I was kind of playing it safe, just block his punches, control his, uh, control his biceps. That way he can't really do any damage. But then again, nothing's really happening. So the first round just kind of played it safe. Second round, I thought it'd come out stronger. I was able to defend his takedowns. He did hit me with a good one that, kind of rocked me a bit but in that sense I wasn't you know I was fully aware normally if someone tries to hit me like I said I'll try to clinch but knowing that he's a Greco Roman wrestler or whatever I didn't want to grab him and get put on my ass again <laughs> so I kind of played it I just kept backing up waiting for him to stop striking but he never really did until he fully gassed himself out as soon as he was, then I tried to go for the. I tried to come after him for the kill because I knew I was down on the scorecards or whatever. There's two aspects right there that you bring up that's different from like North American promotions. Number one, the knees mm -hmm. to a, a grounded opponent to the head. That's something that mm -hmm. you experienced for the first time or had to prepare for. Yeah. And then the second thing is judging a fight as a whole, right? Not round by round, which makes everything strategically a little different, in my opinion. See. And that's the thing, like, yeah, I kind of lost, if it was North American based, I definitely lost the first round. Um, second round, I definitely lost the first half of it. But then going into the second half, third round, there's a, from one championship's rule set, there's a good chance I could have won. He was gassed, he was running from me, and I was damaging him pretty good. Like, his eye was completely shut, and I was chasing after him, throwing punches. Um he managed to hold me on the cage for the last like 30 seconds of the the last round, but you know I think I made my point, and I was pretty happy with myself that I was able to come back from everything that happened earlier in the fight, and at least put on, you know, somewhat of a show, especially for myself included. Like I think for con uh, confidence wise, that was big for myself. You know, this, that was your first professional loss. And then mm -hmm. it went to the decision, you know, you can't, you ended the fight really strong, right? C compared to like, let's say yeah. some guys go and get their first defeat. Let's say it's a knockout where they just get slept. Is there a difference for a fighter coming out of a loss? How you lose? Um, well, like you said, I don't know because <laughs> I, I managed to finish strong. So it's, it's hard to say. I might have felt pretty down on myself, especially if I got taken down and then he did take my back and say that submission attempt he did, he got it. I might have felt terrible after that fight. Maybe you doubt yourself even more, but the fact that I was able to withstand all that and withstand his punches and then keep coming and make it a hard fight, I think that's my biggest goal is just to make it a hard fight for everyone I fight. I don't want to be... If I'm going to lose, no one, you know, no one's record stays perfect for the most part. You know, it might be the few guys out there that will, but we all lose eventually. It's just how you how you take that loss, I guess. Normally, fighting in Singapore is phenomenal, but going through the COVID protocol can be very stressful. Yeah, what know. was your experience like? Well, I don't know. I'm sure if you know, the first time I went for one championship, I tested positive for COVID, so I got stuck in a holding facility there, three different places, and for like 26 days, and it was a nightmare. And this time was better. I mean, I got to fight, <laughs> but it still sucks. It, I was kind of having like PTSD. It was only six months from the last time I was there. And you go there and you're still like stuck in a hotel. You can't do anything and you're not allowed to leave your room. And like, I don't know, I get kind of claustrophobic sometimes. So like being stuck in my room, I start panicking a bit. And I'm sure it'll be probably the same this time, but you know, maybe it'll be a bit more relaxed. Yeah, at least you have experienced it already, right? So the experience will kind of calm yeah. your nerves somewhat. 
Let's hope so. Yeah, and and going through the hydras- hydration testing, you know, did that go smoothly for you? Because other fighters that go there for the first time, they think that they're prepared, but really they're not. Yeah, no, I was fine. I mean, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know we were going to do that at the moment we did. I'd already like so right before we went downstairs, I went to the washroom, and then as soon as we get there, they're like, "Here's your cup. You got to fill this up." I was like, "What?" <laughs> I'm like, okay. And then you go to the washroom and some guy's staring at your junk the whole time. I'm like, okay, this is going to, I even, I looked at him like, this is probably going to take me a while because this is uncomfortable as all hell. So, but I got it done. And then, yeah, test hydration levels, fine, throw it out, whatever. But did they do, did they do te- much testing outside of hydration levels? Like, I don't feel like I had any drug testing done to myself. <laughs> You know, it's it's how they run it, right? We don't know. Maybe you go there this time and they're yeah, testing you three times so. in, in a week, you know? So we'll see what happens. Um, training camp-wise, man, how has this training camp been? You know, you haven't fought. Well, it's not too too long of a layoff. Not too far. Yeah. It was four months ago, three months ago. Um, no, training's been going good. I mean, ever since the last fight, I kind of wanted to work on building a bit more muscle because I've always been kind of a smaller heavyweight um compared i don't know i'm around 237 for me that's small a lot of the guys i've been fighting lately they're like weighing 257 to 265 pounds i know one goes off the kilos and i really have no idea what i weigh for any of that stuff so i'm still going by pounds um so for me i just want to put on at least another 10 pounds of muscle if i can sit around 245 um, lean, then that's kind of my goal weight, I guess. And I've been working with uh, like a strength and conditioning coach, whatever, really helping me push weights and keep my cardio high. So I've been feeling pretty good, actually, in that sense. I'm feeling stronger. Anything in particular you've been like focusing on during this camp? Uh, not really. Like I said, just strength. Just keeping my strength high. Like uh, we made such progress in the off season. I don't want to go into fight camp and all of a sudden stop working on my strength as well. So I'm just been trying to incorporate more like explosive weight techniques and like uh, circuits to keep my my cardio high, like sled pushes and stuff like that, battle ropes, whatever. Yeah, you, you're gonna need it because some of these boys in that heavyweight division, man. There, mm-hmm. there's rarely any small heavyweights, you know. Like in no. the UFC, you see some, but <laughs> in one championship, there's some big boys in there. They're pretty big, exactly. That's what I'm saying. I don't know what they're putting in their water. They better be checking. Yeah, the hydration <laughs> test. <laughs> That's right. You better be checking that hydration <laughs> test. So, uh, what do you see for yourself, Ben, against Hugo? How do you see yourself uh, performing against him? That's always a hard question. I don't know. I've always prepared every fight to go to the distance, so. I know I'll be ready um, physically, just like I was in my last one. But, I mean, it'd be great to finish it and especially uh, put on a show. And who knows? Maybe get that performance of the night bonus, you know? You know what I'm saying that they just introduced? From what I... You know, is that so performance of the night? Does that only go to the one guy? It's not like fight of the night, right? Yeah, it's only... From what I saw in the last event... It, it goes to an individual, right? And then okay. what's the craziest part is one of the individuals that won performance of the night, she lost yeah. her fight. Oh, wow. Okay. See? Could have been me on the last one. <laughs> yeah. I came back pretty good, and everyone was saying it was fight of the night that night. So Get the same, man. This time, you know, <laughs> right. go in there, finish it, get performance of the night, no questions asked, take home that 50K. That's, that's another thing. Say, say you finish it within, like, you know, 20 seconds to a minute. Like, is that a performance of the night kind of bonus? Or do they keep thinking like, ah, it was a fluke. He just hit him with a good shot or he submitted him right away. Whatever. Is that like even performance of the night worthy? Like, I don't know. It's... Yeah. The criteria is, is, <laughs> I don't is know how they, blurry. I don't know how they judge that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a blurry thing. You know what I mean? They're just, <laughs> they're just throwing darts on the dartboard and seeing where it exactly. sticks. Exactly. Um, later that night, man, the same night you fight, um, you're, the, the guy that you fought, in your debut, yeah. he's fighting for the title against uh, uh, Malikin. You know what I mean? It's Could for the interim, me. interim heavyweight title, which makes which me. makes me think like if he's fighting for the title, 
that means you're pretty close to the title yourself because that fight was a pretty good well, one. Well, that's what I'm thinking too, right? I'm thinking, say he wins the title, I win this fight. You know, Arjan doesn't want to defend his belt. Maybe I can rematch him again for the title. He better have his cardio on point because I killed him in the cardio department last time. And if it would have went, if it would have went four or five rounds, that fight was mine easily. What do you think of of this fight? What is your breakdown of the matchup that's coming up for that interim title? <laughs> I know the guy that Krill's fighting. You know, he's been on a tear pretty good. He's you know, is he undefeated? I can't remember. Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> Heavyweights hit hard. There's always a chance a chance someone can knock each other out. It's it's a really hard call, right? It's hard judging fights. I'm not good at that stuff either, and I haven't really watched too much of uh, Krill's opponent. This is a interim title fight, so Arjun. Yeah. Basically, what Arjun was is doing is he he had a couple fights, a couple challengers. They they offered it to him, and he turned them all down. What do you think of this situation right now? Money. Yeah, he wants more money, right? So <laughs> no, I, I understand I'm surprised. that. I understand he wants more money, but it's like, it, it, don't we all? I don't know, man. Yeah, we all want more money, man. <laughs> uh, at the same time, you know, he knows the contract he signed for, but the same, whatever. Um, I honestly didn't even think he'd fight again after he won the belt. There was talks of him kind of not not fighting again and just trying to really try to go into pro wrestling, whatever, but. Honestly, don't really think he has the personality for pro wrestling. No one really wants to see him. So, you know, <laughs> now he's got to defend his belt. I'm pretty sure he has enough money. He doesn't even need it to settle down. He could just stop fighting. He'd be happy. Dustin, thank you so much, man, for the time, you know, that you're thank taking you. away from working. And, uh, yeah, good luck. Have a good flight and, and have a good performance. Awesome. Thanks, man.